Welcome to the video. Uh, in this one, we're going to be talking about a new feature in version 2022.2 of the designer and the dashboard. And that is the ability to create analog gauges for use in your designs in the dashboard. Uh, this is a very powerful tool and has a lot of options in it. And we're going to go through those one by one and talk about what they do and show how they affect the design of the gauge in the designer. Uh, there'll be timestamps uh, in the video description below. So if you want to skip around, uh, just follow those or watch the whole video from the beginning to the end um, to see how everything works. This is uh, the first video in what's probably going to be three videos. Uh, we're going to do this one. We're going to do another one talking about how you create uh, custom needles for use in the uh, gauges. And also we're going to do one just uh, creating a gauge and showing how you can use various features to overlap gauges or do transparent ones and add multiple needles and things like that. So with that, let's get started. So here we have a dashboard with a couple of gauges. And we're going to use these to go through the various properties that you can um, have when you're designing your gauge uh, in your dashboard. So first I'm going to select one. It's this uh, one here, the red one with the RPM. And we have our standard properties on the right. So there are a lot of properties associated with a gauge. Um, the standard information, you know, its name, its dimensions, uh, the background. Uh, there's the configuration of the dial, uh, what we call dial zones. Uh, font options, the needle options, and then the tick options. So we're going to go through each of these and talk about what they do uh, and demonstrate it quickly. So first off, obviously, is what do you want to call it? In this case, it's just an RPM gauge, so gauge RPM. Um, you have your channels, and you can have a gauge display any channel uh, that is used within the designer, in this case, RPM. And here you have the current value of whatever channel you chose. So this is uh, the value of the RPM at the moment, 6,534. And we can see over here, the needle is pointing to that uh, um, 6,534. So that's useful just to make sure that everything is lining up in your, in your gauge. Uh, next are dimensions. Uh, they are truly fascinating with the center and the radius. So basically the center is right here, and then the X and the Y radius. And like anything else, you can lock these or unlock them. Okay, so next up is the background, and you have color choices. So the ring, which is the outer part here, in this case we've chosen red, and then it's sort of an off-white for the background. And if you click the little boxes here with the X, uh, that gives you a transparent color. So that can be useful depending on what you're going for with your gauge. Uh, next is the width of the ring. So using this slider, I can adjust how wide that is. Uh, based on what I'm trying to accomplish. And then you have different styles. So you can have nothing, you can do a flat ring, you can do um, a raised, which is what the original one was, uh, a wide raised or a double raised. So I'm gonna go back to here. And then uh, we have textures, so you can have nothing or you can have grooves. So the grooves are right here on the inside. Uh, and uh, that works for all the different styles. And then the final option for the background is the shadow. So you can choose to have a shadow displayed or not. So if you see right in this area with the checkbox checked, there's a shadow. And if I uncheck it, there's no shadow. So I'll leave that checked for the moment. All right, so next is the dial configuration. Uh, so this basically has to do with what is being displayed within your gauge. Uh, and again, this all kind of relates back to the original data channel, which is RPM here. So first is the start and the end angle. So we're starting at this particular uh, location, 150 degrees and going through 30 degrees. So in the uh, dial over here, we can see there's a dot right here and a dot here. This is the start and this is the end. And I can grab these and move them to adjust how this works or how it's displayed. And as I move this, you can see that the start angle here and the end angle here do change. And you can type in an exact number if you want, or you can use these uh, handles to, uh, to move it around. Didn't actually mean to move the whole thing like that. Probably about here. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and next is the rotation angle. So the entire uh, dial within the gauge can rotate depending on what you want. So this is not rotated, but if you look at this one, this is rotated. So the, order, the way to rotate it is you can grab this handle and just spin the dial. 
or you can type in a specific number here. In this case, we'll just go back to zero because that's what I want uh, to get whatever rotation you want for your for your gauge and your dial. And then finally, you have a start and an end value. So this is this gauge goes from in this case zero to ten thousand, and since I'm doing RPM, it's zero RPM to ten thousand RPM. Um, and then we have uh, some number format options. So these numbers here, the zero, one, two, three. Um, they're obviously all based on the currently selected data channel, so that's RPM. So these are my options for how I want to display it. If I display it as is, you'll see it goes 0, 1000, 2000, etc. Um, but for an RPM gauge, that is not really ideal, so I really wanted to be divided by 1000 and just have these numbers. But I might also want to do you know, by 100 or by 10, depending on what works for your, uh, for your gauge and your dial. So we're going to go back to the uh, 1000s. And uh, then we have these offsets, the X and the Y. This determines how far away from the end of the tick marks do the numbers appear. So if I make this larger, you'll see that the numbers move farther away in the horizontal and here farther away vertically. And you can set these to whatever works for your uh, gauge and your dial when you're designing it. Next up, we have dial zones. So we're going to switch over to this uh, gauge here, the speedometer, this crazy speedometer, to look at dial zones. Um, so this one has three. Um, and if you look at our original one, it has just one. So you can break up your gauge into multiple zones. Uh, and basically a zone is a section where the dial, sorry, the needle will move uh, at a consistent rate within that zone. So there are certain uh, gauges like usually this is with temperature gauge or uh, perhaps a pressure gauge or something like that where the ex the extreme values you know the low end and the high end aren't really that important so they may be um, cover you know a, a small area may cover you know a hundred degrees in temperature and then you have a, the average temperature area which maybe goes from a hundred degrees to say 300 degrees and that covers a bigger part of the dial and then at the top end you might have a smaller um, section of the, of the dial being used say 300 to 360 or something. So in this case we did it with speedometer because why not? Um, so I have three zones you can choose up to four and I specified that um, the first zone uh, goes up to this is takes up 20% and then it used of the whole dial and then it takes up, goes up to the value of 66 miles an hour. And then the second zone goes up to 133 miles an hour. And the final zone goes to 200 miles an hour. Um, and this gauge actually goes to zero to 200 because it's a speedometer. So now I can adjust these by typing in whatever value I want here, or I can come over to this section and just move the handles to adjust how my zones are going to work. Um, so zones are really powerful, especially if you want to use a, um, a gauge which has multiple sections in it. Uh, for, most, uh, for most uses, probably one zone is just fine and you can leave this section alone. But if you're getting into more advanced styles and gauges, this is where you want to go to set up how your gauge is going to work. Um, font options, this is just what font is used to display your numbers. So you got font, weight, and style. Don't think we need to spend too much time on discussing how that works. Uh, the next up is the needle. Obviously, this is the needle. And um, you can choose where it is and how long it is and what type of needle it is and does it have a shadow or not. So uh, the first thing is where is it? So we have to rotate X and Y. This is the point around which your um, dial, so your needle will rotate. And 99% of the time, it's going to be the middle of the uh, of the gauge. So these would be set to 50. Uh, if you move these, then the needle will move. Um, there are certain type of uh, gauges where perhaps the needle is not actually in the center. It might be slightly lower or slightly higher or something like that. But uh, most of the time, it's in the middle. But for those occasions when it's not, you can use this to adjust where your dial rotates. So for now, I'm going to put this back on 50. And when you're moving these, uh, these sliders, you can also just use 
the arrow keys to adjust them as well. Um, and now you have the length of the dial. So this is how far is it from the center to wherever you want it to end. Um, and I can adjust this to make a smaller or a bigger dial, depending on what I am um, looking for in my, in my design. <clears throat> Next up we have what type of needle is it? So the designer comes with these uh, pre-designed needles um, and you can choose whichever one you want. Um, or you can actually create your own in the needle designer. We're gonna do a whole nother video on that, so I'm not gonna get into that here. But <clears throat> this is where you choose which needle shows up in, um, in your gauge right here, and then shadow or not a shadow. Um, usually if you have a shadow here, you're probably gonna have a shadow at the top, but um, again, up to you and your design. Uh, so next up we have ticks. Uh, the tick marks are obviously these lines right here and these small ones. So there are three types of ticks. There's the major ticks, which are usually the bigger ones. Then you can have smaller ones, which are medium, and even smaller ones, which are minor. Um, so, uh, and you, so first is, do you want to have ticks or not? You can show them or not show them. Um, then you can choose the color. Um, and do you want a border or inside an outside border? So an inside border looks like this, and an outside border looks like that. And you can do both if you want to, depending on what you're trying to get. Um, and then the start value and the end value. So in this case, uh, the start value goes from 0 to 200 because I want them all the way around my dial. If you didn't, you could adjust this to a lower value perhaps. And then the frequency is how often do you want them to be. So I want a major tick every 25 miles an hour in this case. <clears throat> so I've got 25, 50, etc., all the way around to 200. Uh, the next thing here in this slider is the length of the tick, which is how far is it from one side to the other and I can use this to adjust where they appear. And I can even use this to reverse where the numbers are. So right now the numbers are on the inside. If I want the numbers on the outside, I would take this and just flip it around. So now I can have my numbers on the outside. Um, and again, you adjust this to, uh, well, I'm kind of all off now, but anyway, to be however you want it for your, um, for your design. And then you've got the width of the tick. So this is just how thick it is. You can adjust this. Uh, whether or not you see numbers for them. And then um, how big those numbers should be. Uh, you know, bigger or smaller. <clears throat> and then do you have an upper range? So an upper range would be like if you were using an, uh, over here on RPM, we have these are red. So if I want to say, if I'm going over 150, I want them to be red or something like that. I can just change this to 150. And now those ones are shown up in this color, which is red. I can change this to any color I want. And then um, medium ticks and minor ticks are all the same. You can play with those if you want. Um, the one thing we have that medium and minor ticks have, which majors don't, is a tick style. So there are basically two styles at the moment. There's standard, standard which is just these lines. And then there's curved, which is where the lines kind of get bigger as you get go through the, um, the next step up ticks. So if you look here, this is a great example of a curved one. Um, they go up to um, the major ticks, which goes every, you know, goes zero, one, two, three, but the, the medium ones are curving up like that. So it gives you a kind of a stylized uh, way to display your tick marks if that's what you want, or if not, you know, just standard works fine. Well, I hope this has been a useful video. Uh, as, as mentioned, there are a lot of features in the analog gauges um, and you should just play around with them. You can make a lot of different gauges using those tools. Uh, we're gonna do another video coming out shortly about the needle designer uh, because you can actually create your own custom needles to put in your analog gauges. Uh, so um, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you'll see when that is coming out. Uh, and always uh, go to www.z1-board.com and download the latest version of the, da the, the dashboard and the designer and also the analyzer um, arch telemetry tool, which will help you improve your lap times, become a faster racer and win those races.